Hey guys, Ryan House here, and welcome back to our fifth episode of Europa Universalis Rome. Today we're going to prepare for the war against Carthage. So that's going to be our main focus of this Let's Play, and hopefully we will defeat them at sea and on the field of battle. Alright, see we just cleaned up some barbarians. Captured some slaves. Apparently we have uh, some new decisions available. I haven't showed you guys this before. We can proclaim a republic confederacy. See, the mercantile senators have got it in their heads that a republic can better receive would better suit us. Interesting. So this is what would happen. We lose two stability. Our type of government would change to Republic Confederacy. Rulers would reign for four years instead of two, so it would reign twice as long. And rulers could be re-elected after ten, but we'd only have one economic idea and one civic idea. And our total research points would increase by 20%. Interesting. I want to see some of the economic ideas. Regiment, recruitment speed, and naval blockades. So they're really not that worth it for now. And I I like Rome as a military public unless we can get access to like really good economic technology. I, I don't think I'll be changing our republic style just yet. See the Carthaginians are trying to clean up those pirates there. should have quite a few ships being built. I think we have enough ships in queue that are being built right now to get us up to 30 ships, which is excellent. Considering we started with the game with 8, we're already up to 20 plus. We've already built 20 ships, and each of those triremes cost the state 10 gold each. That's that's a huge investment for Rome in these ships here. So if you just look at that, that's 280 gold worth of ships. Uh, the legions aren't nearly as expensive as expensive as ships, but ruling the Mediterranean is very very important. Being able to project our power overseas is, is monumental in this game. Very important. Alright. Religious power shift. It's happened. Yes. Stability cost modifier, negative 25 percent, and omen success chance plus 10. That's right. It's excellent. And he's happy. Alright. Quintus Emilius Pappus. Highly loyal. And it's good that we, we got somebody else other than the civic faction in power. You want to rotate the factions in and out of power. You don't want the same people, the same faction ruling consecutively because the other factions become more unloyal every time somebody's ruling that's not from their faction. So it looks like we have two anti-corruption laws that we could pass. I'm not going to be doing it yet, mainly because I want to—I really want to get our stability up. You can see it's only going to cost us 28.3. That's not bad at all. That's really good. So this is a time or a period in Rome his, Rome's history where we can stabilize our country in preparation for a war. I think Carthage they're still at war, yeah. So, even if they finish the war with Epirus, like right now, they're still going to have a high amount of war exhaustion. And a war against us is just going to complicate matters for them. This is the ideal time to go to war with Carthage. Hmm. 
Excellent. We have some more ships being built there and up here. We have a smaller trade balance coming in now though, that the religious factions in power. We won't be making as much money. Which is fine, we had just finished building the fleet that we desired. So now we can focus on other things. Such as stability and war. I would rather have the military faction in power before we go to war, but hey. Take whatever you can get, right? Oh, the military faction is dreadfully low now. The civic faction, the populist faction. Oh, no omen has been enacted. Yes. Okay, well that's a really nice chance. If we get the blessing of Mars, that'll help us. Oh, it failed. Oh, that's crap. That's horrible. That is horrible. That's going to set us back. <laughs> you are so forgettable. Quintus Emilius Pappus has a problem every time he leaves the room. The people just forget he was ever there. It is hard to get people to notice that he even exists sometimes. That's horrible. Oh, uh, what does that do? What does that do? We're going to find out. A noticeable monthly popularity decreases, so... Fortunately, he's charismatic, so it's going to cancel it out. Huh. Poor guy. And the omens aren't boding well for Rome right now. Going to build another Velite. I think we'll pull the Velites back. Yeah. We'll pull the Velites back for now. I'm going to be splitting, I'm going to be taking these two legions off the borders. They're going to be attacking Carthage. Uh, this legion here, actually I think I'll split this legion and I'll move this legion up to the borders. These two will come to Rome. Yeah. So these two legions will come to Rome. We'll move the fleet to Rome. We have a nice amount of ships now. <clears throat> and he'll pull back to Rome. We don't want to encourage any of the barbarians to attack us while we're at war. And we'll sacrifice the gods now. Excellent. And I think the next sacrifice will cost us 56.7. Pretty expensive. But far cheaper now that we have a religious leader. <clears throat> you have to excuse my voice today. I just uh, just woke up and it's kind of sore. Must have been snoring. All right, thirty-three ships. Not too bad. That's excellent with an excellent leader as well. However, the morale is wretched. <laughs> It'd be nice. It'd be the opposite. It would be great if we could have it the other way. Carthage is still at war. You know, if we're going to go to war with Carthage, the first thing I'll do is I'll move our fleet to Tarentum where we can dispose of this minor fleet over there so it doesn't merge up with other Carthaginian fleets elsewhere. And I think Carthage has a pirate problem right now. Money in exchange for a new position. We could use money. Some people seem to think that money can buy you anything. It's true. You have been offered a small fortune in exchange for appointing an acquaintance of yours to the position of shipwright. You have never really paid him much attention before, but it would seem like he has the right qualities for the job. The current shipwright would probably not forgive you anytime soon if you decided to accept your acquaintance's offer, however. Lucius Genusius Clepsina would lose 
550 family prestige and 10 loyalty. And Quintus Agulinius Gallus would gain 550. Hmm. Quintus Aemilius Pappus would gain wealth. This man here, he would become an excellent man to rule. As a Navy Quaestor. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. He's much better. Okay. Only 10 loyalty. Yeah, he loses family prestige, but come on now. That kind of stuff happens. Especially when you have a corrupt man in power. <laughs> he wants money. Okay. Excellent. So, the new legion's up here. It's the first legion. We're going to split it in half. Hmm. Yes, so be 5,000. We'll make sure he doesn't command the troops that he currently has. 5,000 men. Two of them over there. Oops, one extra. There we go. Oh, I messed that one up. One too many. Okay. Yeah, we peeled off all the loyal units away from Barbala. Some of them were his loyal units. And then we'll move this legion to Bononia. And we'll point a new legate. He doesn't have to be a great legate. Someone who hasn't been a legate before, preferably. You know, we'll even have Gaius Junius Bulbacus. He'll become a new legate. And let's rename this legion here the 4th Legion. I'm using Roman numerals. I'm having fun with that. Alright. And then these two units here. That's 25,000 men. That's pretty solid. One can that. And this fleet will just wait here in the mare. And that sea there. And we're going to begin the war. Alright. Our war. Let's see here, real quick. Yeah, we would have till 504, so we have 24 years to prepare for this war if we really wanted to. But that wouldn't make for an entertaining let's play, and I want to, I want to attack these people. Okay, so we are now at war. Let's go over this real quick. Uh, Publius Claudius Pulcher, he was in their country. He's been executed. It's too bad. And the Battle of Mare Hadriaticum is over. They lost four ships, so we already smashed their fleet quite quickly. Excellent. Let's go pick up our armies. And we'll transport them to Panormus. So the Punic War has begun, a Roman blow to Carthage, sinking four of their ships, 40 gold worth of ships. It's <laughs> good. Alright, let's start it up. And Carthage has a Cassabelli against us, doesn't really matter though. So we're already at war, what are they going to do, declare war on us? Back? <laughs> Alright, so we lost some of our trade routes that we had with Carthage. It's to be expected, but look at this. Massilia already wants to trade with us. So we'll accept. And Rome. Rome's going to need grain from elsewhere. If possible. Nope. Doesn't look like we could trade anywhere. Maybe we can trade with them. Yeah, I don't really want iron that badly. 
Alright. I'm just going to pick up one army and move one army. The other army can stay back. I'm going to move an army of yeah, 12,000, the smaller army. And take them to Igate and Soleil. Indeed, they do have pirate problems. So this would be the... Uh, here they come. Oh crap, and we have guys on the on the boat here. Oh, they're moving to Carthage. Okay, so maybe we can land before that happens. Yes. We have 33 ships. I'm not... I don't really want to uh, get into a, an equal value fight because the Blessing of Mars failed for us. And that's going to last until 480 of August. So a few months. Um, we'll fight this war conservative to, uh, conservatively until we can until we can get uh, a better blessing. Barbarian absorption. Now this is a good event. With the founding of a colony on our frontier, our settlers have come into contact with the native barbarians. Our governor is doing his part, using his skills to convince the uncouth savages to settle down and live in a more civilized manner. The barbarians of Liguria are beginning to see the benefits of civilization and are slowly being assimilated. So we must encourage this. We will lose two barbarian power in Liguria. We will gain one population in Liguria. That's excellent. Yes. And we have a successful colony. Faced with our cultural superiority, the barbarians of Liguria have fully accepted our way of life, worshipping our gods, and even starting to speak our language. Excellent. So the culture in Liguria will become Roman, and the religion in Liguria also changes to Roman. And it's no longer a colony. Now that, that is awesome. Liguria. <clears throat> Roman culture. Roman religion. Excellent. 6.6 .6 people. Now that's how it's done. That's the first uh, province that that was a Roman colony that's turned into a province. That's excellent. What does the tri triumph actually do? Uh huh. You can hold a triumph for well-deserving generals. Do one in Rome. If you watch the movie Gladiator. In that movie, they hold a triumph. Basically, moving down uh, to the Colosseum or uh, whatever building that was on the chariot. It's pretty awesome. And, and then the, uh, the TV show Rome, they had a triumph for Caesar when he came back from Gaul. All right. So we are doing very well. Carthaginians, however, are not. Apparently they have also had a... They tried to invoke the uh, revolt risk omen, the deference to Dido. However, it failed. And so now revolt risks all over their land are, is much higher. I'm going to assault this town. Uh, it didn't go so well. That's right, our morale is wretchedly low right now. Yeah. We shouldn't be doing anything like that. We have one more month before we can invoke a new omen, so hopefully that works. Quintus Amelius Pappas has always been convinced that the best way to make new friends is by being yourself instead of pretending to be someone you're not. As of late, though, he's not so sure he believes that is to be true anymore. Sometimes you may have to give people a small incentive to gain their support. Hmm. Yeah, he's losing some popularity due to the war, mainly. Uh, he has plenty of wealth. He could do this. Uh, yeah. So, if he wants to be a little more popular, yeah, that's fine. Now he's, he's popular yet again. I don't... 
carry on for a while for him. I moved both regiments there? I don't remember doing that. Huh. Well, I must have. Anyways, I'll move the other one back. So we'll just continue sieging this city here, and I don't want to move our ships out yet until we get a new omen, which is about to happen. In fact, we can do it right now. Let's do it right now. Ah, oh, it failed again. Well, regardless of the outcome, this war has started. We're gonna we're gonna go invade. We'll start with Corsica. Macedonia declared war upon the Achaean League over here. Or the Achaean League. Go land in Corsica. And we'll just siege Corsica there. And Benonia is no longer trading wine. I guess we were trading with uh the Achaean League there, we must have. That's okay, Rome needs grain, and grain has been freed up, so excellent. It's actually perfect for us. <clears throat> Alright. Still no sign of the Carthaginian fleet. I believe they're at port here, but they're not coming out to play. It's too bad. And I do believe I'll call in our allies. Now, I don't want to, uh, I'll make sure I secure these three areas before I call in our allies. And they're so small, I don't know how much they could do, honestly. Surprised the they haven't been expanding, colonizing anywhere. And I'm also surprised that our um, our blessings continue to fail, even though we have such a high percentage of success. I guess it's all those uh, other times that we succeeded with population growth. Vengeance, venge, uh, revenge is a dish best served cold. Guys, Fabius Licinius has been plotting to see the end of his rival for a long time now. Excellent, it's against a populist. The planning has paid off now and it's time to strike. Let's see what happens. Aha, Quintus Aemilius Papus, Papus, not our consul, uh, different man, he has died, so one less populace, excellent, I'm actually kind of happy for that, uh, that's good, ambition fulfilled, yeah, good job, good job, bucko, alright, I wonder if there's anything we can do to keep uh, the military faction stronger. Right now, it's it's growing weaker and weaker, and the military faction tends to have uh, really good generals, really good men that can lead. So Carthage isn't even fighting back. Uh, they have so many internal problems right now. Uh, just being at war for them is bad, and they have such a large empire. I mean, oh my gosh, some of these areas, I expect to uh, see them under assault by rebels all over the place within the coming months. I, at Carthage, I just see falling apart. So, you know, if this would happen to us, um, Carthage would probably take advantage of us as well. In fact, even some of these smaller kingdoms would probably declare war on us. There we go. Well, that was really quick up there. Excellent. Move that army over here to Sardinia.
If Defender's deserting. Yeah, so look, we should have control of that city soon enough. Sardinia next. Gnaeus Cornelius Blasio is the new consul, also the religious faction. And it looks like we're going to have a round of civic faction leaders coming right up. Which reminds me, I'm wondering if we can make uh, popularity. Okay. So our really popular military men have already served their time. If we make this man here, well, let's see, Augur Pontifex, that should improve his... You want to get, uh, the basically the most popular people become your consuls, so the higher their popularity, the, the, the higher chance that they will become consuls. And they... Uh, must not have been a consul within 10 years of the last time they were consul. So. After 10 years, they can become consul again. Yeah, we're going to assault since the walls are breached. Might as well. There we go. Did it. Ambition fulfilled. Have a son. Excellent. Good. Alright, the siege is over. I think it's time to go pick that legion up. Say so, Quintius Claudius has passed away. Uh, yeah, I think he was. Is he one of our leaders? Huh. No, he must have been a former legate. Lots of barbarians. Lots of war going on here. Ah, oh, Malta revolted. What if I can move there? No. I might just go take Malta from the rebels right now. That should be quick and easy. Very quick and easy. Yes, so you, you can see that they're already starting to revolt here and there. Malta has started to revolt. I'm going to go this way. So we're going to go pick up Malta right now. And Carthage... <laughs> Uh, they want a white piece. I couldn't even accept it if I wanted to. Sorry, guys. Oh, those warmongering Romans. Yep. Civilizing the world. Siege of Sardinia is already over. Excellent. You guys just hang on there. Get some of your manpower back. Ah, and they finally declared peace with Epirus. Got some rebel units here. Shouldn't be a problem for us to clean up. Just wiped out the rebels. I think we can quickly assault. Possibly retake the city. There we go. Perfect. So we'll have that army stay in Malta for now. And go pick up the army in Sardinia. So we're, we're quickly uh, conquering Carthaginian territories. And the more territories we start conquering, the happier the Romans in the Senate are in favor of uh, in favor of uh, exacting some peace out of Carthage and possibly some territory. All right. Oh my. Oh my. Macedonia is becoming a, a large power to our east. We'll have to keep an eye on Macedonia because. A unified uh, Macedon would be very powerful. They have excellent troops, excellent generals. Okay, we're going to go get uh, Bellere over here. Check out their coastline along the way. Lucius Cornelius Lentulius has always dreamed of being a governor. With the news of a governor finishing a full term, he has persuaded the Senate to endorse his claim. He wants to be a governor of Max, uh, Magna Gracia. Uh, yes, I will accept that. Sounds decent. Gain some mercantile conviction as well. And look at the populace. The populace faction has lost a lot of sway. Many of these men. So is our, so is our military faction, however. So. So 
Looks like they have some pirates out here. No problem. Oh. There we go. We'll take that. Wonder Child. The child seems to be to have an exceptional uh, talent for anything theoretical. Everything seems to come so easy to her. You shall. You should be really proud. Now, women can be leaders in Rome, I believe. However, when you have a woman in power in Rome, uh, everything goes to shit. So, it's a very chauvinist society back then. Okay. I'm actually gonna... Uh, oh, I haven't really noticed. <laughs> That's so cruel. Uh, I haven't really noticed. Yeah. That's probably true, though. But we're gonna... Well, it kind of runs in the family. I wouldn't really expect a Roman uh, father to really pay so much attention to his his daughter. Probably more attention to his sons, because they would inherit the state. Uh, your child seems to be afraid of absolutely everything. It's possible that she would gain some more confidence if you just tried to be a bit more supportive. Okay. Alright. Oh, yes. There we go. Blessing of Mars. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Well, there you have it. At least we don't have the negatives. Yeah, I don't... It's crazy. Go for a sacrifice. I think we'll do that. And then with the leftover money, we'll build a couple more ships. There we go. Excellent. So we're strong. And the Carthage fleet hasn't come out to play till now. Now they've come out to play. Alright. Well, we'll let them come out to play. Oh, he's a better leader. And he got an excellent result there. We're going to break away. Wow. Well, he hit us pretty hard there, guys. He's coming back for more, eh? So we'll put our fleet in port there. We're going to continue uh, expanding the size of our fleet. We have to win uh, the confrontation with them. And I think more importantly, we really need to get... Uh, we really uh, need to get... Let's see here. The Blessing of Mars. With the Blessing of Mars, we can beat their fleet. Ah, that hurt us pretty badly. But I think we'll be alright. We have several of their colonies, as long as they don't start transporting their own troops all over the place. Uh, what happened here? Oh, this time they invoked the Omen and it succeeded for them, so things are actually turning better for the Carthaginians. For the most part. They've lost a lot of ground, though. So, but they won a nice little fleet battle against us. I'm gonna go pick up our army. Relief of army. One of our relief armies has finally reached its destination, but unfortunately the general currently in command doesn't feel too comfortable serving together with a man from one of the lower classes. Is that Quintus? Yeah, one point of charisma for uh, Welate is not good. I'll just send him away. Uh, Pappas here can become stubborn for all I care. Oh man, he's becoming a conqueror, that's bad. Well, it's bad because units become loyal much faster. And this man is stubborn now. So he will be over here in Bolera's, right? Yeah. Does this man have conqueror as well? No. He's just incapable. <laughs> Wow, he's 
How many loyal units? He has four loyal units. Wow. About this man over here. Seven loyal units. Jesus. You know, it might be time to appoint new legates. He has four loyal units. There we go. Publius Sulpicius. And one more. Gaius Claudius Canian. These guys aren't too bad as generals. I mean, he's an excellent general, and they're all. He's starting to gain quite a few loyal units. Yeah, seven of them. That's going to impact his loyalty, as you can see, right there. Oh, man. Well, one more battle, and he has such a large fleet now. You see, if his loyalty reaches such a low, we won't be able to unappoint him. All right, here's hoping to uh, some of those loyal ships getting sunk. All right, here comes the Carthaginian fleet. I guess we'll try to get them into port. Let's see what happens if we land an army here. Put it into Lacania. Just wanted to pick up some of our armies real quick. Oh, we had another ship there. Excellent. Oh, we have one here. Have them meet up. Alright. Combine our ships together. 35 ships, not too bad. Hopefully that Carthaginian fleet will come out and play now. I think they're coming. 32 ships. Yeah, see, they're growing the size of their fleet as well. But I want to play now. Yeah. We want to fight. The religious party. They've gained five senators. How about that? More ships for the fleet. Probably have losses. Yeah, we're going to have to siege Carthage to get them to... Oh, we lost our army Quaestor. That's, that's too bad. Who wants to be army Quaestor? Gaius Aquilius Florius. I haven't heard of this man before. Oh, he's the populist faction leader. Hmm. That's bad. <sighs> lots and lots of populist conviction. He's very unloyal, so even if I point him to that position, he probably wouldn't want to give it up later. So we'll give it to Tiberius Caranius. Tyrannicanus. Yeah. There we go. Corrupt governor, it has been brought to your attention that embezzlement has become one of your governor's biggest interests of late. Perhaps we should try to find a replacement, someone a little less corrupt. Uh, Puglia is too valuable to be run by such a dishonest person. Is he corrupt? Silver tongue suspicious. He's self-controlled. He's not corrupt. <laughs> I 
They'll both gain some corruption. I'm gonna see if they can come to some agreement. Yeah, why not? Now, corruption, uh, it can be bad, but um, I think it increases increases the tax money that you get out of a province, I believe. However, it might cause a little more revolting, that kind of stuff. No, doesn't seem to be doing anything too negative. Let's see here. We can find out right now. Corruptness. Corruptness is exactly what it says it is, how corrupt a character is. A corrupt character, since the governor province, will be more likely to take a cut for himself, upsetting the residents. On the other hand, corrupt characters will squeeze a province more effectively, leading to greater revenues. So, there you go. So, piss off the re residents a little bit at the expense of uh, making some Skrilla. Not bad. <laughs> I think I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to combine both these armies now, and we're going to march onto Carthage. We're going to take Carthage. If they don't stop us, then that's that's their deal. We're going to conquer Carthage right now. We're going to do this. If we conquer Carthage, then they'll have to come out. The, their ships will have to come out and fight. See, it seems to me that they're depending heavily upon their own fleet. But their fleet's slightly smaller than ours. Actually, when can I enact a new omen here? December 8th. Alright, so I'll just pull in, we'll enact a new omen, hopefully get the one we need. And then we will attack Carthage. Alright, it's omen time. Blessing of Mars. Third time's the charm? Yes! It is the charm, my friends. And it will lead to the downfall of Carthage, because Mars is on our side. Here we go. This will be the big attack. I mean, we're sending all of our ships. And two of our legions. And we just sunk one of their reinforcement ships. Yep. Now we're in Carthage. So they have a pretty large army there. It might kick our butts. I don't know. If I form it up into one army. Hmm. We have the Blessing of Mars. We have disciplined soldiers. Hmm. February 4th. If we win this battle, we can stop them. Oh. Yes! Win it! Alright, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue this army. If we can continue to win here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, we're losing badly now. Oh, we were doing so well. What happened? Gladi uh, Gaius, come on. Oh, man, are you kidding me? Carthaginians. They got us, guys. Can you believe that? Ah. Now that's horrible. So the big, uh, the first big battle against Roman Carthage on land it was a Carthaginian victory. I think it's time that we uh, reconsider who our leaders are, even with the blessing of Mars. My gosh, this is sacrilege. I need to pull them back so our troops can uh, reorganize. It's going to take several months to replace all those losses. It's a lot of losses. Pull back one unit. Yeah, you know what? 
Let's do that. We're gonna we're gonna add another unit to this army. We'll just beat them down with brute force wherever possible. And the mercantile power is taking control, trade, income, and diplomacy. Okay. Okay. Just spin here. Okay. New governor. It certainly helps to have good friends in high places. Yes, it does. Lucius Papirius Pre Rex Tatus becomes governor of Magna Gracia. Then we just appoint a new governor and Magna Gracia. He's rather unloyal, because he has loyal troops. Who is this man? He really just has friends in high places. He's a Pontifex. He's rather loyal, though. God, he's wretched. He's not that good of a friend. Yeah, he's not that good of a friend. Alright, I'm going to pick up this army here. Who is this man? Marshal 5. Who are you? Marshal 6. Yeah, we need the best general we can get to smash Carthage here. Now, the problem with this, Quintus Emilius Pappus, he already has 7 loyal units. His loyalty is going down. The problem with this, whoever goes and smashes Carthage is probably going to want to create a civil war in the next couple of years, shortly after the fall of um, the victory in Carthage. So, that's concerning. So I think we're going to go with Publius here. He has fewer units. He's already quite unloyal though. No, we're gonna go with Quintus. He's more loyal. Oh my. But he's already a conqueror. Hmm. If I made him a Pontifex Maximus though. Alright, so we'll go with Cornelius. We'll combine the legions into one. We'll allow him to become Pontifex Maximus. Go over here to employ. Actually, I don't think we can because he's a legate. That's right. So maybe we we'll give him Pontifex Maximus after after his victory over Carthage. It's the least we can do. All right. New governor yet again. My gosh. Again. They're doing this again. Alright, fine. You can become the new governor. Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to be governor of uh, the Ducks of Mag um, Gallia Sisipina. Guess it's not as much, not as prestigious to be out on the frontier lands, huh? Yeah. There's man. Several. Two of them. Marcus Melius Paulus. Alright. Excellent. Sure, we'll get you in there. It's good to have uh, strong military martial type leaders out on the provinces. It uh, makes people feel... It, it helps them grow, basically, when you have good leaders. Hmm. Yeah, see, it's going to take at least um, four more months to get to where we need to be, and 
Blessing of Mars is almost done. Decisions available. Oligarchic Republic. What does this do? Rulers reign for two. One military, one econo economic, one civic. And monthly wealth of everybody is up. Excellent. Everybody becomes more wealthy. <laughs> a dictatorship. They're actually pretty good because a dictatorship allows you four ideas. One of each. And, uh, but you'll gain that tyranny. However, you'll lose that popularity. Or you'll gain that popularity. So Caesar was a, a dictator. And he became quite unpopular with a number of Romans. To the point where they just killed him. <laughs> yep. So we'll drop this army off here. We will create this gigantic army. Mm-hmm. There it is. The gigantic army of Rome. Maybe we'll go pick a fight now. See several Carthaginian fleets out there. Be nice just to catch some of the small ones here and there. Yeah, I think they're gonna go into port. <laughs> Run. Twenty thousand. Very large army. We'll wait one more month and then we'll begin the new attack. <laughs> the next one. And hopefully uh, get another blessing of Mars. Uh, we need it. We're fighting on their ground. We need the blessing of Mars. We'll probably be taking uh, attrition. Well, if we can just conquer it quickly, we won't have to worry about attrition. All right, off we go. December 8th. Mm-hmm. Any new laws? Ah, oh, here we go. Ah, uh, I like that, trade income. We get more trade income, but less slaves to free men. Which isn't bad because uh, the more slaves we have, the more income we'll be making. We can have that up for a while. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. Should have some more trade income now. And yeah, we go right for Carthage. Go right for the head of the Cobra. There we go. And we're going to salt it. Yep. Ah, come on. Crap. Get off. <laughs> Get out of there. Ah, uh, that sucked. Yeah, I wanted to just take it quickly, and we got really close. We got incredibly close, actually. Those dastardly Carthaginians. Hmm. Can't even sue for peace yet. They're like, so what, you took a couple of our islands? We don't care. <laughs> You haven't taken Carthage. Cultural absorption. The Samnium has been a colony of ours for some time now. Yes. Remember the history lessons, the Samnites? The barbarians have been absorbed into civilized settlements and now seem to be taking on our ways. The governor has used his persuasive talents to convince them to become fully like us. However, we can really expect a barbarian to think like us. Hmm. Yes, let it happen. Yeah. P 
people will become Roman slowly over time. Roman, Roman, Roman. Yeah, it's happening. Even these uh, toga-wearing Gauls up here, that's what they actually called them in history. These were the uh, the Gauls from uh, Gallia Cisalpina. They were called the toga-wearing Gauls. Lighter hair, blue eyes, yet Roman. Uh, they're getting attrition here. This wasn't a good area to drop them off at. So it's just going to hit our manpower severely every every month. But I have really no other choice in the matter. Uh, we have a lot of units here. This is more than I would normally take. This is what I have to take in order to break Carthage. And uh, it's very difficult. I could probably take a footfall over here and then march. But I couldn't have these large armies. And Carthage, their army is already fully assembled. Um, if they were broken up into smaller groups, maybe then I could break my army up into smaller groups and then tackle them or warm up and take out one large army. But it's very difficult to beat them on their own ground. We're losing a lot of Romans. People think you foolish. <laughs> People think you foolish, yo. Cornelia Latulia Prima has a reputation for either picking the wrong moment to do the, wrong, the right thing or just the right moment to do the wrong thing. These errors of judgment have become the stuff of legend. Well, I think uh, this Let's Play has been running pretty long. Um, this will be the first episode of the Punic War. Uh, we've accomplished quite a bit. We still haven't taken Carthage, although we've gotten pretty close to taking Carthage. Um, we'll wait for our army to come back together, and uh, we'll see if we can get this Blessing of Mars here. Press fingers? Yes! So indeed, we will wait for this army to get back together, uh, get some more men. Uh, we'll wait probably like two months, and then we'll attack Carthage. And this time, with this leader, we will do it. Alright guys, I'm Ryan House. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you guys in the next Let's Play.